Now this is a $1 trillion coin, and I'm gonna tell you how this relates to the ABC Act in just a moment, but first of all, look, I got another one here. It's two trillion. Hey, Credit Warriors, Credit Shifu here, and you know, I've kind of been resisting doing more stimulus videos, but after reading through the Automatic Boost for Communities Act, or ABC Act for short, I just felt there was too much juicy stuff there to resist. And look, now I've got the act here and we're gonna go through it. Just joking, it's only two pages long. But anyway, even though it's only two pages long, going through it, um, you just feel like you're going down a rabbit hole that gets crazier and crazier. So let's read through this act together. So this act was proposed by Democratic Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib, or Tlaib, the L comes before the A. Most people say Tlaib, but anyway, along with another Congresswoman whose name is also hard to pronounce. She wants to give everyone in the United States a debit card preloaded with $2,000. And she wants to give you another $1,000 on that debit card every month until a whole year after the coronavirus crisis finishes. So let's say that you get your debit card on May 1st, and let's just say that the coronavirus crisis ends at the end of June, okay? We're just throwing out that date. So you'd get $2,000 in May, then in June, you'd get another $1,000, and then because the crisis ended at the end of June, you'd get another 12 months of $1,000 payments after that, meaning that you would get a total of $15,000 over 14 months. Now that doesn't sound too bad, right? Not too insane a proposal, but wait, there's more. Now in the act, she is very particular about saying that she wants to give these debit cards to every single person in America. She even has a whole section called guaranteeing universality. She wants to give them to kids, to tourists who stay in the US longer than three months, to illegal immigrants. But I'd like to take you back to the first line in that section. A couple with two children would receive four times $2,000, $8,000 in total. So that is for the first month, and then they get an additional $4,000, $1,000 on each card every month after that until the crisis is finished. So let's follow the same timetable, say it finishes at the end of June officially. Uh, this family of four is gonna get $60,000 uh, on these debit cards out of this scheme. Now that certainly would be incredible for someone who'd actually lost their job. $60,000 is roughly the median income. That's probably why they chose that figure. But remember, this is for everyone in America, regardless of wealth or employment status. Even Sergey from Russia, who brought his two kids and his wife here on the four month road trip of a lifetime, is gonna get one of these cards. And what's more, his family is gonna get $4,000 a month on their cards every month, even after they return to Russia, probably. And to give you another example, I made roughly $140,000 last year. Now I have a family of four, just like Talib's example in the act, so I would be getting $60,000 over four months. That would take my family's annual income from 140 up to close to $200,000 a year. Yeah, something tells me she hasn't really thought this through. Anyway, let's go on to the next section, distributing the money. Show me the money! So these debit cards would be administered by the US Treasury. You'd be able to use them to buy things in store, withdraw cash at a bank or at an ATM, and you can even top them up yourself. I'm sure manufactured spenders would find a way to take advantage of the situation. And as for the distribution, they would either mail them to you, there would be in-person pickup, or what she calls at-risk outreach which is basically, even if you don't ask for a card, they're gonna send someone to seek you out and give you a card. It's kind of like a Mr. Beast video. Well, uh, I don't have any cash, but I got some gift cards if you need some help. But for every single person in the US. Now, let's look at the most insane part of this. How is it gonna be paid for? Because she said that she can pay for it without creating any more national debt. Here's what it says in the document. The US Treasury Secretary would direct the US Mint to issue two $1 trillion platinum coins. So there you have it, two $1 trillion coins. And I'm guessing they look something like this. This is actually what a $100 platinum coin looks like. I just blew it up to this size. But if it's a trillion dollar coin, I'm guessing it would have to be probably at least this big, right? Come on guys, give me a like for trillion dollar coins. I spent about 20 minutes making these. Anyway. The act does quote a section of the US legal code that apparently gives the treasury secretary the authority to create trillion dollar platinum coins. Here it is. 
The Secretary may mint and issue platinum bullion coins and proof platinum coins in accordance with such specifications, designs, varieties, quantities, denominations, that's the crucial word there, and inscriptions as the Secretary in the Secretary's discretion may prescribe from time to time. So yeah, from time to time, you can just create the odd trillion dollar coin, take it down to the trillion dollar store and buy a few items. But no, the coins would be deposited in the Treasury's account at the Federal Reserve, and the Fed would then release $2 trillion worth of funding to fund the debit cards. So great, now we know how it's produced, conjured out of thin air like magic. Well, the magician produces a rabbit from a hat, like that. Hello. Great, I would have thought there was something dishonest going on there, but now we know it's all above board. Now, I want to move on to the last section of the act, which I think is actually very important, but probably is the most overlooked section, with most people just focusing on the money going out to the people in the form of stimulus cards. Show me the money! But I want to read it to you because I think this is very important. In the long term, the card infrastructure should be converted into a permanent treasury administered digital public currency wallet system. Does this act propose a complete government takeover of consumer banking in the US? I mean, it advocates that everyone is given a government bank account of sorts and that that infrastructure become permanent. Then it also mandates the creation of a US digital currency, kind of like a government cryptocurrency. And then on top of that, what about the hyperinflation that this would cause? Remember, they're not just proposing giving money to people who are out of work to replace their lost income. They are proposing giving already wealthy people even more money. Your US dollar would end up worthless and then they would have to pump more stimulus onto these debit cards to stabilize the situation. All that's left is for them to stick a microchip up your butt, activate Skynet, release the G-Virus. Doctor, we're here to collect the G-Virus sample. Sorry, but I won't just hand over my life's work. And the post-apocalyptic future is ready to go. What's that? Oh. Yeah, they already released the G-Virus, kinda. Now I joke about this and we don't really get into conspiracy stuff on this channel, we're more about personal finance. But reading the full ABC Act, all two pages of it, does make you feel that there is some kind of agenda behind this act. Is it a trial of universal basic income like Andrew Yang proposed during the Democratic primary? Maybe, but it seems to go even further. You know, if everyone in the US has a government bank account and they can top up and use that account themselves, not just receiving stimulus money from the government, then in one fell swoop, the US government has just taken over a huge portion of the banking system. Now, I think that there is no chance that this act could pass in its current form or even be considered for a vote. There are currently three competing democratic proposals for more stimulus money for individuals. And the other two proposals are far more well thought out and reasonable. Then there is Trump who prefers something else to more stimulus money. Um, what about the idea of another round of stimulus payments to American taxpayers directly? Democrats, of course, up on the Hill are talking about the idea of a guaranteed income, which obviously could go on for months and months and months. Yeah. What about another round of Well, I like the idea of payroll tax cuts. I've liked that from the beginning. That was a thing that I really uh, would love to see happen. A lot of economists would agree with me. A lot of uh, people agree with me. And I think, frankly, it's simple. It's not the big distribution, and it would really uh, be an incentive for people to come back to work and for employers to hire. Now, to be honest, although stimulus proposals are exciting, free money, yay! The payroll tax cut if it was permanent, although it would give you less money in one go, it would probably have longer lasting effects. Well guys, there's the video. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. Give this video a like for the YouTube algorithm. Don't forget, we have got an amazing deal with Webull where you can get two free stocks for opening and funding an account. Link to that deal is below. If you're into stock trading, stock investing, it's a great app to check out. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.